Hello and welcome to the third and final part of this lecture series on Richard de Saisal's Apocalypse Soon. If you want to listen to the first two parts in this series of lectures, I have provided the links in the description box down below. So in this particular video, I go through an analysis of the last four stanzas of this poem. That is from stanza five to stanza eight. Let's now go to the fifth stanza of this poem. So the stanza starts with saying, divide and rule and pendulous, pendulous to the north, hangs jungle dweeper, stained with her own blood, bleeding heart, red as ripe pomegranate and bitter as the damson. All the fruits of hate quivering she holds, waiting to drop into our gaping mouths. So the beginning of this stanza starts with this phrase, divide and rule, which is very significant here because it talks about the divide and rule policies, which are our colonial legacy, from the British starting from imbuing communalism into the politics of Sri Lanka, into favoring and offering more opportunities to the Tamils in order to gradually and deliberately root the seeds of ethnic disharmony in the nation, particularly between the Sinhalese and Tamils. So therefore we can say that the source starts by establishing the violent history of post-independent Sri Lanka, referring to the innumerable violence the divide and rule policies lead to. Then he continues on to say, and pendulous to the north hangs Jambu Dweeper, stained with her own blood. So the reference to Jambu Dweeper is important here. Here the author gives us a note which says Jambu Dweeper is one of the ancient names uh, ancient Sinhalese gave to India. So in the poem, he says that Jambu Dweeper, bleeding heart, red and bleeding heart, red as ripe pomegranate and bitter as the damn sun. So Jambu Dweeper, as we said, can be a reference to the internal conflicts within India. But even more than that, as I've said before in the first two parts of, in this lecture series, what is important in this poem is the prophetic quality of De Soisa's lines. So we have already talked about how this poem comes across as giving a prophetic revelation of the tragic events which are yet to take place. So reading in that same line of thoughts, we can imply that here and also in the next few stanzas, the reference to India can indicate the deployment of the Indian peacekeeping force, that is the IPKF in Sri Lanka, which took place between 1987 to 1990. So to give you a bit more context, let's go to an academic article by Alan Bullion titled The Indian Peacekeeping Force in Sri Lanka. Here, starting, as you can see here, all uh, he says that although it has been argued that the IPKF intervened in Sri Lanka by consent as a consequence of the Indo-Sri Lankan Accord of July 1987, the political and strategic background of the Tamil crisis indicates that the intervention reflected India's policies as the regional hegemonic power. The intervention also represented a fundamental departure from the traditional parameters of peacekeeping in terms of IPKF's lack of impartiality and the level of force which was used. So it goes on, basically. And you can actually read the entire article if you do have institutional access. And I have given you a link to this article in the page of references, which would come out uh, towards the end of the slides. So with this in mind, let's come back to the poem. So though the deployment of the IPKF took place in 1987, this poem was written, as we know, in 1981. So therefore, this implication can, in a prophetic manner, give foresight to the IPKF, which will take place in the future. So the implication is evidently a violent one, considering the bloody visual imagery that the Soiza is deliberately using in referring to the bleeding heart, uh, bleeding heart as red as ripe pomegranate and as bit and bitter as the damson. Here, the poet's comparisons to fruits is very interesting. This is because we can say that this can be an example of intertextual elements such as Greek mythological references the Soisa has imbued in the poem. The pomegranate can be a broad allusion to the impending danger uh, of the temptation offered by Hades to Persephone in Greek mythology. So pomegranate can suggest the temptation or even superficial solace and peace, which can be offered by Jambudweeper to Sri Lanka. 
but underneath it is as bitter as the damson because the involvement does not present a desirable outcome but a more tragic and violent one that is yet to come. So here the damson refers to another fruit which is a sour dark blue uh, fruit of uh, fruit which is a type of plum. Uh, so from here De Sousa continues to use allusions to fruits of hate, uh, which can metaphorically stand for the impending strife and the violence that she holds, she meaning India as a nation, is waiting to drop into our gaping mouths, which refers to Sri Lanka as a nation. Okay, now let's go to the sixth stanza of the poem. Dark faces on the city pavements pale beneath the mysteries of holy ash. What of the roads spread wide and deep and far beyond the limestone of the north? A wind blows through the holes of high commerce. The brilliant trembles at the flare of a nostril, flames falter in, in the sacred lamps of brass, in dwellings on, ar on the arcades of Colombo. Seven, one, it was lots of fun. We had curfew parties. Five, eight was not so great. And now, what happens now? So from the first two lines of the stanza, dark faces on city pavements pale beneath the mysteries of holy ash, we can see that the poet is intertwining the communal violence erupting in the streets to, the, to that of the religious context to evoke that no space is safe and that violent violence continues to proliferate. And he talks of the mysteries of holy ash, which refers to the sacred ash used to anoint devotees. And then in the next few lines, he continues on to refer to the roads which are spread wide and deep, which can be assigned to the roads of hatred, which proliferate beyond the north to encapsulate the entirety of Colombo in Sri Lanka, spread by winds and flames. So throughout this and also in the previous tensa, we continue to see how Richard Soisa prophetically predicts the trauma which would impact Colombo and also the role played by IPKF in the future. From there, now let's go to the next tensa. It starts with saying, will out of the blackened streets and rubble ruins, caravans ride forth into blazing deserts of isolation, where the crack of lonely snipers' rifles fills the air and Brahmins hover, hover flickering in the haze of heat-filled sky. Here we see that De Sousa continues in the same line of thought where he evokes the repercussions of violence, which is the destruction of property, devastation, and loss of lives. When he starts with this reference to the blackened street and rubble ruins, and then he continues on to talk about the deserts of isolation. So the reference here to lonely snipers rifles fills the air is again an indication to the violence and even the premeditated attacks. Here we are given a description in the author's note saying Brahmins, Brahmin kites, birds of prey commonly found in the coastal areas of Sri Lanka's dry zone. The term in its original sense of the upper crust of India is also used for senior Indian civil servants, in particular those who make foreign policy. So the references to the sniper and the birds like Brahmin kites, who are birds of prey, are significant here because this is a bird who is a predator that preys on other animals for its survival. And the poet through this refers to the internal and external forces who employ positions of authority and power. Perhaps we can say that he is denoting the predator-like existence of snipers who purposely and meticulously plan their attacks from a vantage corner and even a safe place where their lives are not directly impacted, but others' lives are. And he's also referring to the external forces who occupy powerful positions, who like these birds of prey that hover in the sky. 
He is referring to this perhaps to the lurking existence and the interference of foreign authorities, which can only lead to the heightening of tensions and ethnic violence in the future, impacting the lives of an entire nation. So with this in mind, let's now go to the final stanza of this poem. The lines say, has the fifth horseman come again to raise his banner and wreak havoc on the land? Here we are given a reference to the fifth horseman in the author's note here, which says, which directs us to see Vitaji Vitaji's Emergency 58. He suggests the fifth horseman of the apocalypse is racial strife. So I have already talked about the significance of this reference in the first part of this lecture series. And again, if you are interested, you can check and you can click the link which I have given down below in order to uh, read more context into it. So basically, if I just summarize what I was telling in the first part, the poet is referring to a possible existence of a fifth horseman, apart from the four horsemen of the apocalypse, that is conquest, war, hunger, and death. So the fifth horseman that is racial strife in the context of Sri Lanka and also in this poem, refers to ethnic strife. So therefore he ends the poem with a rhetorical question uh, to ask whether the fifth horseman can possibly end the nation by raising the banner of hatred and violence to wreak havoc across on the land. Therefore the poem ends in a very gloomy and foreboding tone, accentuating the bleak and ominous future of the nation. So with that, we come to the end of Richard Soysa's poem. We see that he ends the poem by reinforcing the title of this poem, which is Apocalypse Soon. That means that there will be an impending catastrophe, which will wreak havoc across the nation. Here you see that I have given my page of references, which lists all the sources which I have used for secondary reading, and also the visuals that I have incorporated in order to make these slides. And I have also given a link to the journal article, which I shared with you over here. Uh, you can click the link, but as I said earlier, you actually need institutional access in order to read the entire article. So this brings me to the end of this lecture. Please like and subscribe for more free content and timely notifications. Thank you so much for your support.